Hey everybody, Pastor Kevin, welcome to River City Online. We are in week eight of a series called Practicing the Way, and we're looking at today a sermon entitled The Rule of Life. Rule of life, yeah, maybe not a term you've heard, but what is a rule of life? Well, simplistically, it's it's an intentional plan to grow spiritually. So in this series, we've been looking at practices and, and all these different rhythms that we could have to grow in our relationship with Christ and be, as we are His pr- apprentices, we intentionally have practices that help us grow to be more like Jesus, to be with him, to be like him, and to do what he did. And so uh, let me ask you this question. Have you ever gone on a trip without a plan? Have you ever gone on a trip without a plan? Most people have a plan, but I know some people who've gone on trips without plans, especially in the younger years, but sometimes I even know some older people. Some people think that's an adventure. Um, <laughs> but I had a friend in high school, I'll never forget, it was, he was like, a, I think he was a senior in high school, and he, I was talking to him one day, and he said, yeah, yeah, you know, last week I, I uh, was on this call with my girlfriend, and she lived in Vancouver, and I'm in Lewiston, and I just decided at 10 o'clock, it was like 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night, I'm just going to go up and see her, just spontaneously. The thing is, so he did it. I mean, he just took off. Well, the other thing was interesting is his car, the clutch was out, so he had no clutch. He was driving, like, <laughs> having to shift without a clutch, a four-speed, a five-speed, I think it was, and so he drove, you know, I think it was like seven hours to see her, saw her for like two hours, and then turned around and came back. Well, on the way, somewhere in eastern Washington, uh, he, he spotted a fire going like at three in the morning and um, stopped at a farmhouse, reported the fire, uh, fire got put out, made his way all the way up, had a two-hour visit, and came back. To me, that's kind of a crazy story. I can't imagine doing that. I'm not a ma- I wasn't a major planner back then, but that was no plan at all, and I can't believe he did that. The thing is, in our spiritual lives, we can live it like that, very spontaneously. And the thing is, God will use it. God will, he'll use us. He'll, he'll, we'll do some good things. We'll put out some fires. But it's so interesting that uh, tradition in tradition and in the Bible, we see that actually having a plan is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. And being intentional about leaning into God and asking him to help us create those patterns and rhythms and practices that help us putting forth some effort in the growth process, in the maturing process. And so we've been looking at nine practices. Another practice for today that I want to show you is this practice called witness. And it'll be on the screen for you. What is witness? Well, intentionally telling others the good news of the gospel of Jesus. So the good news, the gospel, the good news, actually intentionally sharing that in a relational way, uh, all kinds of ways, in small ways, big ways. And what do I mean by that? Well, you're sharing how God's impacted your life and what his death, burial, and resurrection means uh, for others. You are intentionally doing that. And, and so just a couple of quick things, and it's on the screen for you, that I just say make a go-to list. Make a, begin to make a prayer list of people that are in your life, in your spheres of influence, family, work, hobbies, school, those spheres. Make a list of that and begin to pray intentionally for those people and say, God, give me opportunity to serve them, to love them, to bless them, and eventually share the good news of Jesus with them if they don't know Christ. And so that's, that's just an intentional prayerful rhythm to begin. And then you'll have that opportunity to share your story and then share God's story, the gospel, the good news. And so do that. That is a practice, a rhythm to figure out and prayerfully figure out how to work that into your schedule. Maybe just say, you know what? I'm going to intentionally have a meal with somebody. Uh, uh, I'm going to intentionally have a conversation with somebody. I'm just going to pray and say, God, lead me. And, and, and you, as the Holy Spirit leads you, he will lead you to the people, those people of peace, those people who are ready to hear the good news of Jesus. So that rhythm is huge. One of the practical ways to share your story, I put this on the screen, is just this acronym BEST. BEST meaning, so B-E-S-T, BEST, where I was before Jesus, the events that led up t- to that coming to Christ or that salvation day, when did you actually fully surrender to Jesus, that's the S, and where are you at today? So if you were, it's really good to think through your story if you've never done that. One piece of paper, just write that down or on your phone, write down where was that before, what happened to those events that led up to me coming to Christ. Everybody's story is unique and different. And that's the thing, it's your story, but if you practice it a little bit, you'll be ready to share it. Um, you, could, you should be able to share your, your story in 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Most people could share it longer, but be ready. Where were you at before? What's a couple things that 
where you were at, you were re mess, wrestling with or struggling with, what happened with Jesus, and then where you at today. Yeah, even that, 15 seconds, you should be able to do that. That's something to practice, though. You need to be ready and intentionally to give the good news of the gospel out. Now, uh, these practices, these rhythms are so fun, and, but we've got to be intentional about it. And, and so that's what today's message is as we're culminating towards coming to the end of this series one more week after this. Matthew 5.19 and, and Matthew 7.24. Look at Matthew 5.19. This is, the context here is the Sermon on the Mount. Um, this is the bookends of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is beginning his teaching here in, in Matthew 5. Look what he says. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever, what does it say, practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, see the practices. Yeah, I just want you to see that, that practice. You actually have to do it. There's a repetition to it. You, you keep at it. You keep, the reps matter. The reps matter. And then that's on the front end of the Sermon on the Mount. Five, six, and seven. Read it multiple times, over and over again. Study it. It's so beautiful. And then Matthew seven twenty four at the bookend, the other bookend of the Sermon on the Mount says, "Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and then puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock." When we practice these things, these commands, these things that Jesus is teaching here in Matthew five, six, and seven, ah, practice them. Repetition. Keep at it. It means you don't come to these. Uh, the obedience of these truths and the full revelation of those things in one step. It's practice. It's repetition. It's keeping at it. And so when you and I have these practices worked into our lives, the practices of these truths, these rhythms, put us under this fountain of grace, if you will, that helps us continue to mature and grow and be transformed, to be with Jesus, to become like him, and to do what he did. Now, these practices in some, uh, some people's worlds are called the spiritual disciplines. That's another uh, term that gets used, spiritual disciplines, habits, rhythms. Practices, you know, some people resist when they hear the word discipline, but they're, they're rhythms, they're practices that we need to intentionally work in our schedules. And so, uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. And part of that, the language here around that is... The, the rule of life. So that's what today's message is about, this rule of life. It's not rules of life, it's singular, rule of life, which this is an ancient language. It sounds kind of odd, maybe a little off-putting to our modern ear, but it, it's a beautiful plan. It's a, uh, even scholars would use the metaphor in John 15 of the trellis and a vine, that, that the trellis is the structure for the grapevine to grow on. Uh, without, a, without a trellis, the vine's just going to flow along the ground and be trampled on, not produce, it will produce some fruit, but it won't produce the kind of fruit it's designed to produce. And just back to my trip vacation analogy or taking a trip and not having a plan, that's the difference. You can have an okay plan, an okay trip without a plan because you can be spontaneous and there's place for that, times for that. But when you have a structure, a little bit of a plan, it's amazing how much better it can go. And with God, we, the intentionality is we're prayerfully leaning into you, God, and trusting you with that. And so this, this trellis and a vine, I think, is a really good picture. You could look at the trellis as kind of the practices of the nine, for instance, that we've been talking about in this Practicing the Way series. There is more than nine, but let's just take these essential nine, and you create this trellis, and then as we're living our life in Christ, as we're his apprentices, and we're being with him and we're becoming like him and we're doing what he did it's like our vine the vine of our life becomes more fruitful because it's it's in its proper place right and and it's it's set up properly to grow it's got a support structure it helps us make space for life with god that's what a trellis does and um so so i just put the definition of a rule of life on the screen for you it's an intentional plan an intentional plan a rule of life is an intentional plan to follow and so my goal for today is that you would be inspired enough believe enough that you would take the time out of your schedule prayerfully to create a rule of life after this that you would in these next weeks next month before the end of the year that you would sit down and pray and say God help me put this together and I'm going to give you some thoughts today about that some inspiration and even a tool a, a PDF you could download uh, for that um, or you could email the church and we'll send it to you but I want you to lean into this take some time you wouldn't build a house without a plan don't build the life and walk the life God's called you to without a plan 
a flexible plan. It's not a rigid plan. It's a flexible plan. All right. And, and this rule of life really needs two things, a, a compelling vision and a plan, as I mentioned. And so this, a compelling vision, God's given us that. I mean, I mean, ultimately, you could say a compelling vision is, is we're called to love God and love our neighbors, right? Two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with everything, your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then under that, as we've been talking about as apprentices of Jesus, we're going to be with him, we're going to become like Jesus, and then we're going to do as Jesus did. So those three big action steps, in a sense, under this compelling vision. It's to be like God, to be like Jesus. That's what apprentices do. We're going to be like our rabbi, right? And I tell you, when you and I live with that kind of purpose, that we're, we're here to, to advance the kingdom, expand the kingdom, and to help people see who created them, who made them, and that they're called to live for him and spread the good news of him, to be with him, to be like him, and to do what he did. Ah, it's beautiful. So that plan piece, you know, compelling vision, yes, but the plan piece, I love this quote from Pete Scazzaro. He says, nurturing a growing spirituality with depth in our present day culture will require a thoughtful, conscious, intentional plan for our spiritual lives. I, listen, I, I, I get this and I, I've really, you know, I'm a creative, uh, I'm, I'm 56 now, but you know, most of my life, early, the early years, uh, I just, I had no plan. I just went with the flow. I just like to have a good time, like to have fun, nothing wrong with any of those things. But what I found is that, is that I want, as I wanted to grow as a leader, grow in my relationship with Jesus, I had to have some structure. I had to have some systems. I had to have some process. And uh, a rule of life is one of those things. It's just another language. And because here's the thing, it's like, uh, I like this quote that I'm going to put on the screen, that your system is perfectly designed to give you the result you're getting. This, your system is perfectly designed to give you the result you're getting. Or we could exchange that word system with practices. Your practices are perfectly designed to give you the results you're getting. In other words, your life is the direct byproduct of your lifestyle. But so many times we don't extract or even evaluate or step back and look at what our lifestyle is. We don't look at our practices. We don't look at our rhythms. We don't look at our habits. And because we have them all, we all have, actually, you have a rule of life. Whether you intentionally have one or not, you got one. You got practices, systems, processes, things you regularly do, intentionally or unintentionally, that are helping get the results you're getting now. And so let's evaluate those and see what God wants to do there. So you might be pushing back, Kevin, I don't need another, I don't need any rule of life. I don't need more structure. I don't need no systems. That's too stifling for me. I'm a free flower. I get it. I feel that. But let me tell you what I found personally in my life is that the creativity actually expands when you have some tr structure, when you have some trellis that can support the vine. And so that creativity actually can flourish versus laying on the ground and trying to grow in a, a place it wasn't designed to. But when you get that trellis, the, the wind comes, the, the nutrients come, it's, it's protected against certain things that would hurt the vine. In your life, it's the same way. These practices, these rhythms, a bit of structure and system helps you thrive, helps you flourish. And so I want to encourage you. Uh, this, is, this is not just theory. This is something I've lived out. I'm still working on. I'm still living out. And it's made a huge difference in my life. Huge, massive. I know I'm way, way more free than I would be without. Now, a rule of life uh, is, I like how Comer says it, it's a map or a path. It's not a straight jacket. <laughs> I like that. And so I want to give you a few things here to help posture you to make this rule of life. So let's look at Psalm 24, 1 to 5. It says, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one, w let no one who waits on you will be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Verse 4, show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths, lead me in your truth, and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I will wait all the day. And the challenge here is that it's just so easy to get, to misjudge or get going and live a self-directed life. 
um, it's, it's easy to get on, because we're always on a path, actually. We're always on a path somewhere, but if you don't know which path you're on, because life is always moving, you're always moving, and things are moving, and so we're heading down paths all the time. It's just, is it the right path? Is it the direct path? And I, I like what Proverbs 16, 25, this warning, it says, there is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. Hmm. Heavy. <laughs> so, so in other words, you're on a path, I'm on a path, is it the right path? And even if you think it's right, have you talked to God about it? Is it line up with the word of God? Is it biblical? Is it really helpful? Is it right? Pay attention, lean in. And so just a few things from this Psalm 25 passage, I just want to unpack first thing that will help us posture us to, to create this intentional plan is one, focus on God first. You might go, well, isn't that kind of a duh? I think I need to say it because it's really easy to get self-focused. It's really easy to just get your own will and plan in there and not submit and humble yourself with a posture of humility to go, God, I want to focus on you first. Look at verse one and two. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My mind, my will, my emotions, my spirit. I lift it all up to you. So you're humbly going, oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. You're acknowledging there's resistance. You're acknowledging that there's an enemy out there and enemies and voices and things, you know, the culture, the world, and the devil who are resisting and even your own flesh, uh, flesh, will, and the devil. And, and you're saying, God, I put you first. I choose you first. That posture is huge. Posture of surrender, posture of humility. And then secondly, ask God to reveal his paths. Ask God to reveal his paths. So you're focused on God, right? Lord, and then ask him to reveal his paths. Look at, let's look at verses three to five. It says, indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Show me, I lean into four and five, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. So God, reveal, your, reveal the, the ways, even if I think I know your ways, reveal it more. Give me greater revelation. Help me understand it. Teach me these paths. Teach me your paths, God. Teach me these paths that help lead to you, to, to be more like you, to become, become more like you, to be with you, and to do what you did and help it to be healthy. God, teach me those paths. Teach me those ways, right? And then lead me in your truth and teach me. It's just such a beautiful psalm here. So ask God, so focus on God first, ask God to reveal uh, his paths. And then thirdly, ponder your current path. In other words, ponder your current path. In other words, evaluate where you're at. Because you, you can't go somewhere if you don't know first where you're at. <laughs> you can't go somewhere intentionally if you don't know where your starting point is, right? If, 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 yeah, so if you're going on a trip and you're in Lewiston, um, you, you want, you, your trip, you think your trip is Lewiston to Seattle, but actually you're in Spokane. So it's a different path to get there. You might intersect eventually at the same spot, but if you're starting in Spokane and you thought you were in Lewiston, so first of all, you got to go where you're at. Where am I? How am I doing? What, what are my current practices? What are my current rhythms? Ah, look at that first. And so that's, uh, let's look at Proverbs 4 for that, 25 and 20 through 27. It says, let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. So, right? And then look what it says, verse 26, ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. If you read all the context of Proverbs 4, it's like sometimes what happens is we can be looking straight ahead. We think we're looking in the right spot, but actually our feet aren't going forward. It's like you're walking, but the path you're on is going, taking you this way, even though I'm looking straight. But my path, is, the path is taking me this way. So he's saying, pay attention, look ahead, but also ponder your feet. Where are your feet actually taking you? Am I, if I was gonna come right at you here through the camera, but I'm actually, my feet are going the opposite direction. I think I'm looking in the right spot, which I am, but actually my feet are taking me this way. So that's that evaluation process. That's that pondering. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet and the direction you're going and so you got to know where you're at to get to where you want to go and so that's key so we're going to focus on God first we're going to ask him to reveal his paths we're going to we're going to what ponder the current path we're going to evaluate where we're at as we're developing this rule of life and then fourthly we're going to create the rule of life we're going to create an intentional plan now this may sound harder than it is you can make this as simple or as complex as you like 
Okay, so don't let that freak you out. I'm going to give you some practicals here in just a minute. Um, uh, Proverbs 16, 26, when we're creating a rule of life, I like how it says, ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. In other words, let all your ways be established. Let all your ways be secure, set securely in the right direction. That's how I look at that. So once you've evaluated, you've, you've focused on God, you've asked him to reveal, Holy Spirit, reveal these paths to me, teach me your truths, and, and you're pondering where you're currently at, so you know your current position, and you go, man, I'm actually headed in the wrong direction in these three areas. God, what, what practices do I need to engage in that'll help me shift towards your path <laughs> or, towards, or get back on the right path, right? And God will show you those things, I promise you will. As a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> I, I want to give you a mindset here. These, those four things I gave you are great, and you're at this place of creating a rule of life. But as you're creating a rule of life, you, listen, I think, have this mind, not I think, I know, have this mindset. Not trying, but training. And I put it on the screen for you. Not trying, but training. Because I, I know I've said many times, well, I'll try. I'll try to do that. That's kind of like, that's basically like saying, I probably won't do it, and it's kind of a cop-out. But if you, if you consider yourself in training as an apprentice of Rabbi Jesus, who's being with him, becoming like him, and doing what he did, if you go, wait, I'm in training, meaning I'm going to have... I'm going to have slow days, good days. I'm going to have days where I, I can really, if you were lifting weights, I can lift a lot and days where I can't. You know, I, I'm in process though. I'm taking right steps down the path to go to the right place God's called me to because I'm focused on him. I like how Paul put it in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, but the, using the race analogy here, he says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone, every, every, everyone, I got Elmer Fudd came on me there. Everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. Verse 25, all athletes are disciplined in their training. Notice that word, training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize, right? So I run with purpose in every step. See that intentionality? Purpose in every step, not, not just, I, I like to run freely. No, I run with purpose in every step. I, I'm in training. I'm not just shadow boxing. I got an intention. I've got a goal. And then verse 27, I discipline my body like an athlete doing what? Training it to do what it should. Yeah. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So, just, I just want you to notice those words, training in there. Listen, you and I on this spiritual journey, in, because, of, because of Jesus' incredible work, on the amazing work on the cross, we're in, we're his kids, we're saved, we're seated with him in the heavenly places. And we, that, his offering was perfect. And it, that's, what, that's that incredible grace that we don't have to earn. We can't earn. There's no way to earn it. But don't mistake earning uh, salvation with the effort to grow up and be transformed. That's our part. God brings the actual growth, but we have effort to put forth, and that's what a rule of life is. It's an intentional training plan, right, to become more like Jesus every day. That's our part. God's the one who does the amazing growth in us, but we have a part to, to engage in a plan, all right? You can pre-decide to do that. You can pre-decide, I'm training, not trying. I'm training. And so just to encourage you, four good things that a rule of life will do for you and I, it's going to help you turn vision into a reality. I like how John Ortberg says this in, in it's in Comer's book. He says, uh, it's one thing to have a vision to be a great golfer, for instance, but getting that vision into your muscle memory is another thing. <laughs> right? You got to put in the reps. I'm not a golfer, but I've golfed just enough to go, man, that's hard. Right? And, and you don't become a good golfer. You don't grow as a golfer unless you get out and swing, practice, swing, swing, play, go to the driving range, hit the, hit those little golf balls. I mean, you do not, you got to get it in your muscle memory. And that's the case for anything, whether you're playing the guitar, whether you're doing some art, whether you're speaking. Um, yeah. You need to put in the reps. We need to be training every day. And that vision will become a reality. It'll also help us experience peace 
And the peace comes because you're actually living in alignment with your values as a Christ follower, as an apprentice of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's so many more benefits. And then it'll help you live at the right pace. Man, we've, in this series, we've talked about slowing down. We've talked about eliminating hurry. We are so busy. We are so consumed with things on our screens. And we need practices that will help us subtract some of those things that cause anxiety and stress in our lives. It'll help you balance freedom and discipline. I like what Gunther wrote here. Uh, Gunther, said, I believe she says this, a good rule can set us free to be our true and best selves. It is a working document. I think that's important to pay attention. A working document. A kind of spiritual budget, not carved in stone, but subject to regular review and revision. It should support us, but not constrict us. So good. It's a living plan. A rule of life is a living plan. And so, again, not meant to be heavy, meant to be a helpful document, training document, an intentional, helpful training document. Yeah. And so, um, so to get to the, the, the creating this rule of life, like just for today, what what would be kind of a primer or a starter point? Um, and and I, I put on the screen for you uh, some questions that you could ask. And, and, and you could just take notes on this and you could take a picture of this with your phone on the screen or whatever helps you, but, or write these down. What do I want to put into my life? When you're evaluating your life and, and your journey, your spiritual journey and your physical journey and your emotional journey, and because God is interested in us being his apprentices holistically, he created us holistically. Mind, will, emotions, uh, physical life, mental life, spiritual life, right? Spiritual life, all of it. It integrates together. What do I want to put into my life? What do I want to keep out of my life? Also, what do I want to grow? And what do I want to die? It, just get out a, a piece of paper or get out your phone and digitally and just write those things down. What do I want to put in? What do I want to see come out of my life or keep out of my life? What am I resisting? What do I want to grow? What do I want to die? And I think you could, even if you wrote these words down, subtraction and addition of something, subtract or add. When it comes to the practices, this is important to think about. And I think it's a way to help you kind of ponder uh, the different things as you, as you make a list of those things you want to put in, you want to keep out, you want to grow, you want to die. For example, think of things, you know, kind of could fall into two big categories. The, for instance, there's the sin of commission and there's the sin of omission. And in the sin of commission, uh, the response in the practices is to, is, to, is to begin to do a practice that is a subtraction practice, something that would take away something. So for instance, if you're wrestling, if you want to overcome porn or lust in your life, if you're wrestling with that and struggling with that, or you, it's the appetites of the body, maybe it's, maybe it's overeating, maybe it's laziness, maybe it's oversleeping, that's a, that's a, com a sin of commission. You're doing, you're doing something that is unhealthy and not aligned with scripture, then you want to put practices into your life that are subtracting something. For instance, if you're over overeating or if you're wrestling with, with those porn or lust, uh, fast, fasting, that's a subtraction. That's you're eliminating something. And what that'll do is that'll help you wrestle with the fleshly desires. Right? Because you're, you're disciplining yourself to go, wait, no, I don't let my flesh rule my life. The, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, I don't let that rule my life. Yeah. And so, uh, and, and maybe, you know, like for me, for instance, in the area of uh, another subtraction thing would be this, like I'm a people guy. I love people. I love spending time with people. I'm a total extrovert. And so I can sometimes overdo it with people. And sometimes I find I spend time with people so that I don't have to get alone. And, and even this is subtle, but sometimes I feel like the Holy Spirit's like, Kevin, you need to get alone and be silent and have some solitude with me because you're so busy with others and helping others. You're not listening to me. And it's weird. It's like the shadow side of a good thing. And, and so for me, I can, I can have a sin of commission by doing too much ministry, doing 
too much serving, spending too much time with people and not giving myself any margin to be alone with God. Even remember Jesus, he was pulling away. He would do the ministry. He would hang with the crowds, but then he'd get away and alone with the father. He was practicing solitude and prayer and time with the Lord and time with God. And, and so that's what you want to think about. So when you're looking at your, these uh, practices, you might go, what's the one for me? I need to intentionally schedule solitude and silence in my time with the Lord and in my rhythms of my of my life. Then there's the sins of omission, and and you know maybe you're wrestling with lukewarmness, maybe you're apathetic. Um, what would you do there? Well, and maybe you're like I, I'm not spending any time with other people. I just am hibernating. I'm isolated. Well, then you need to do some. <laughs> engagement practices. You need to get yourself in community. You need to get in a life group. You need to get with a few people who are loving God and get out there and connect that way. And that may be the practice you need to work into your rhythm. Maybe it's the opposite of mine. Maybe, you know, which is fine. This is, this is individualized. And maybe, maybe another one is if you're struggling with those, with those things where you're kind of isolating, pulling back and you're not in community, maybe you need to go out and serve. Maybe you need to go just do something for someone else. Maybe you need to serve food at a dinner church or volunteer at a local nonprofit. Maybe you're fighting pride and, and you're wrestling with humility. You know, maybe you're even out there serving. Maybe you're doing the right thing, but, you're, but you can't serve somebody without taking a selfie of it and posting on social media and go, look how amazing it was when I was down here doing this. And really your motive is, I hope everybody thinks I'm amazing and awesome. Maybe for you, you need to practice some, uh, some secrecy of that. <laughs> you maybe you just need to say, I'm gonna go serve, but I'm not gonna let anybody know I did it. I'm not gonna put it on social media. I'm not gonna tell anybody. I'm just gonna go serve some Someone. I'm going to be generous with someone and give them some money, uh, but not tell them it was me. I'm going to do it anonymously. Those kind of things, those rhythms help us wrestle with these struggles of sins of commission, sins of omission, right? And so, so that hopefully that helps a little, gives you some ideas. So here's the practices. I put the practices up on your screen just for review. It's in, they're in the book. Um, and here they are. Practice of community, practice of Sabbath, solitude, prayer, fasting, scripture, time in the scripture, generosity. And generosity is generosity of time, generosity financially. Um, yeah, so there's, there's multiple ways to be generous. Uh, maybe it's, it's helping someone do something that they couldn't do themselves or just coming alongside. They can do it, but it would be helpful if you did it. It's giving up something to bless another. It's a blessing thing. Service the same way. And then that witness that we talked about today where we're sharing God's story, we're sharing the good news. Um, these are nine of the practices that you can think about and work into your rhythm your intentional plan. And so as you identify these areas you want to change or grow in and these new paths you want to take, um, then what you want to do is just kind of assess which practice fits that, uh, which, you know, what rhythm could I get in there? And, and what's the frequency? That, that's the next thought I had is you want to think about, is this practice something I want to do monthly? Is this something I need to do daily? Is this something I need to do weekly? And, um, and, and, then, and then start to actually schedule these in. Put these on your calendar. And, you know, like, so for instance, for me, uh, I mentioned solitude. Um, so for me, I'm, I'm trying to do, you know, at least a few times a week, I'm trying to have some serious solitude. And, um, and I've, been, I've been fasting um, as well. And because, um, man, overeating is a struggle for me, that, that fleshly thing. It's a way that I uh, almost subconsciously manage pain in my life. And, um, and I've been in training on that. <laughs> and uh, I've been in training on the, you know, my physical body, but also my spiritual body, you know, my spiritual life and my mindset and my emotions. And they're, again, they're all tied together. It's like sometimes I'm emotionally eating. And so you gotta, you gotta say, God, and just be honest with God and be, be vulnerable with someone else. Like I'm being vulnerable with you and going, man, I wrestle with this stuff. I wrestle with these things. And so God, help me to put that intentional plan. You know, maybe for you, it's maybe you fast once every other week, just one day, or maybe it's two meals. Um, but then you intentionally spend that time. For me, I'm trying to get away for a couple hours once a week and, and a little less, you know, uh, on another day where I'm not interacting with anybody. I'm just spending time with the Lord. I always have a quiet time, but a little longer length of time where I'm just connected. Sometimes I'm sitting in my car and I'm just talking, talking to God and 
and journaling and just being with him. And so you figure that out, but, but be intentional about it and work it into your calendar. And so, so I want to show you this document that we put together. Um, it's using the practicing the way material, but for instance, like if you go, well, Kevin, I don't know, like, uh, th- is there more practicals to it? Yeah. I, I, you could deep dive on this really far, but for instance, maybe for you, this practice of prayer here, for instance, I'll, maybe that's one you're like, I really haven't prayed much and I want to, I want to do that. I want to work that into my rhythm. So on this sheet, we've got like daily ideas, weekly ideas, monthly ideas, you know, anyway, it's just gives you some prompts, some ideas of ways to things you could do. You know, maybe you're practicing gratitude prayer. Maybe you really struggle with gratitude. Maybe you're hard, having a hard time seeing anything good. And, um, so when you're praying, you're working in gratitude prayer, maybe listening prayer is something you need to work in where you're actually quieting yourself saying, Holy spirit, speak to me and show me what I'm supposed to do. Who am I supposed to, who's on my go-to list and who am I supposed to go to and share the, that, that witness, that good news of the gospel. So this will help you. Uh, this is just that tool. It, it's, you don't have to use something like this, but it, it, sometimes these things are helpful. All right. So I want to encourage you. We'll have those in the link or you can email the church. Uh, River City Church, and um, and we'll get you office at rivercitychurch.us, and we can get you one of these PDFs. Okay, let me pray for you, and and I just am so grateful that you and I are in training together. Right, pray with me, Lord. Thank you uh, for the rule of life. Thank you for the trellis. Thank you that you want us to be fruitful as your apprentices. And I pray today, as people have heard this message, they'd be encouraged, inspired, and God, you would help them begin training uh, a next step on the training plan. <laughs> and uh, as they get this rule of life put together, it's going to be awesome. Lord, I really believe it will be because they're going to be able to make steps and take steps down a path that's healthier and healthier and healthier. And if you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus, I just want to encourage you. He loves you. He made you. He designed you. He, he, was bar- he, was, he died. He took your sins upon him. He died for those sins. He was buried and he rose again on the third day, defeating death on your behalf. And so he says you can be saved uh, if you believe in him. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. He's your Savior and Master. And so if you want that, just say yes to him now. Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender. I receive your forgiveness. I receive salvation. And uh, I begin a journey with you today. I'm excited about that journey. In Jesus' name, amen. If you did that, let us know. We want to help you get started. Love you. Have a great week.